And welcome back to the show. Amita Care Incorporated is a not-for-profit health plan that actually specializes in providing comprehensive health coverage and coordinated care to New Yorkers with complex conditions. This includes HIV and behavioral health disorders and people who are of transgender experience or actually homeless. Amita Care's innovative model of care has yielded impressive health outcomes that have improved the quality of health care delivery and have also helped members get and stay healthy and produce significant cost savings. And the big question is, how is the health plan's initiatives to help the help end, I should say, the HIV and AIDS epidemic? And here to share a little bit more about this is the president and CEO of Amita Care, Doug Worth. And uh, Doug, good to have you. Thanks, Darren. I'm really happy to be with you this morning. Well, it's a good topic to talk about because when we talk about uh, a lot of the challenges in New York State, we know that HIV and AIDS, that is one that the governor has tackled head on. And uh, he wants to end the spread of HIV and AIDS, and he's put an expiration date on it. Mm -hmm. Talk to us a little bit about the work that you're doing to uh, work alongside the governor and the state in trying to mitigate uh, HIV and AIDS. Thanks, Darren. Um, I mean, it's exciting that New York is still on track to be the first state in the nation to end the HIV epidemic. And we continue to make progress, steady progress, uh, year after year. In 2019, we saw another 5% decrease in the number of new HIV infections in, in the state over the same period the year before. But because of COVID-19 and other factors, I think we're unlikely to hit our goal of ending the epidemic by the end of this year. Um, and that's no reason to slow down our progress. Right, keep the work going, right? And I know the work goes right there with Amita. Uh, what, for people who don't know about Amita, give us a little bit of the background of the work that you do and the people that you service. Yeah, so, you know, we are a not-for-profit safety net plan. So that means, you know, we're sponsored by community providers. And what the work we do is really to make sure that our members get care. We, we've even uh, knock on doors and call people if, if folks aren't getting care or not filling their medications, whether that's an HIV medication, and a mental health uh, for depression or, or uh, anxiety, or getting treatment for addiction disorders. So we're experts at partnering with our members, finding a provider, um, getting the medications that they need to be well so that they can get about the business of living their lives. So with COVID-19 obviously impacting a lot of organizations, impact, you talked about even the work that's going on statewide and how that number or I should say that projection expiration uh, may have to be pushed back a little bit. How has it impacted the work that you guys do? Well, I think COVID-19 has disrupted every aspect uh, of the healthcare system from HIV testing, uh, treatment and prevention work. So for example, the New York City Sexual Health uh, and Wellness Centers, they remain closed due to COVID restrictions. Uh, the kind of critical, crucial outreach that providers and our plan does in bars and nightclubs and out on the street even has ground to a complete halt. I mean, overall, fewer people are going to see their doctor out of fear of being exposed uh, to COVID. And, and then there's more people who've lost their jobs. And so now they might be uninsured and unable to seek out uh, healthcare. So COVID is making ending the HIV epidemic in New York um, all that much harder. Yeah. Here in the borough of the Bronx, a lot of concern. Talk to us about the progress that's being made uh, with HIV and AIDS. We knew for one time that the numbers were rising, but we also knew that this, uh, there was some great work being done. Talk to us about your progress and what are you finding here in the borough? Well, you know, the, the Bronx continues to be disproportionately impacted by the HIV epidemic. About 29% of New Yorkers with diagnosed HIV live in the borough. I guess in 2019, uh, over 460 additional people who live in the Bronx were diagnosed as HIV positive, actually more than any other borough uh, in the city. 
And I think that <clears throat> there are some concrete steps that we take to improve the situation. Um, we know about uh, getting uh, HIV tests. So everyone should, uh, who's sexually active um, ought to be having uh, an HIV test and getting tested regularly. We also want people to get and stay connected to a healthcare provider. And for people who are HIV negative, uh, but maybe placed at elevated risk for becoming uh, HIV positive, we need to start having sexual health conversations that include PrEP. And PrEP is a medication that's more than 99% effective at keeping people HIV negative, uh, stay HIV negative when, when they take uh, the medication on a daily basis. Before we go, I want to get an opportunity for you to uh, be able to talk about the stereotypes, because we know that sometimes it was hard for those who worked with boots on the ground uh, to be able to deal because of stereotypes associated with HIV and AIDS. Uh, very briefly, do you feel as though that a lot of traction has been made in debunking some of these stereotypes so you could actually get the work done? Yeah, uh, thank you, Darren. Stigma continues to be uh, an issue, right? So, you know, one of the things that um, I'm hoping that your listeners will, will start conversations about sexual health. I mean, everyone would ideally like to have a, a positive, healthy, a good sexual life. So why don't we have sexual health conversations about um, staying healthy around having good sexual health experience and for people, particularly young people, young um, gay and bisexual, uh, young men of color, uh, transgender people, um, but more broadly, women of color, uh, black and Lat Latinas are much more um, at risk for, for HIV. And so I think if we could start talking uh, about sex and sexual health and integrating conversations about PrEP, this life-changing, medication that can help everyone stay HIV negative, we actually can impact what's going on in the Bronx and end the epidemic there as well. All right. Well, Doug, thank you for the work that you guys are doing. Obviously, um, still much work to do. And uh, with COVID-19 pushing things back, I know it hasn't halted you, but continue the great work. We'll keep going. Thanks, Darren. All right, Doug Worth here with us. And I uh, want to let you know if you want more information, you can visit the website at amitacareny.org. Again, amitacareny.org. We encourage you to stay with us. We still do have more show coming up. We'll be right back right after this. <laughs> 